بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه وبعد All praise due to Allah and His praise and blessings and peace be upon our Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم His family, his companions and his followers until the day of judgment uh, Today inshallah ta'ala or tonight I would like to continue our talk about the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم as if you see him النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كأنك تراه. He is Muhammad, the son of Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib, the son of Hashim ibn Abd Manaf, ibn Qusay ibn Kilab ibn Murrata ibn Kaab ibn Luay al Adnani. So he's from Adnan, the son of Ismail, the son of Ibrahim. And after that, you will find a different. Uh, uh, opinions about how his lineage and the name of the people and the isnad go all the way to Adam alayhi salam. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah said there is no debate, there is no ikhtilaf that al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam was born in the year of known as Amul Fil, the year where Mecca was attacked by the elephant uh, elephants that was part of the Abyssinian army came to destroy it, Al Kaaba, and that took place in 570. Um, it's claiming that there is ijma or consensus on this, it's not true. As a matter of fact, Al Ulama Rahimahumullah did not agree on the year that the Prophet ﷺ was born. Some ulama said he was born before that year, a year before it. Some ulama said ten years after this incident took place. So you will find multiple opinions actually among the scholars, but no doubt that the vast majority, Jamahiru Ahlil Ilmi Qadim and Wahaditha, in the past and in the modern and, and later on, agreed on that year. Uh, in which month he was born, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fi ayy shuhur sanati wulid an nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tomorrow, huh? That will be like, somebody was thinking I'm doing this uh, program because the mawlid, yani kind of. Uh, actually, uh, there is also a bigger debate between the scholars on this issue. A bigger debate than the previous one. The previous one may be very small number, few people just said not that year. But the month is a bigger debate. You will see that some ulama qil annahu wulid fi Ramadan sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was born the month of Ramadan. And also then said annahu wulid fi shahri safar sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Not even the month of Rabi' al awwal. But the biggest debate. The biggest debate is which date, what's the date of his birth, when he was born. 12 of Rabi' al-Awwal, هذا قول مشهور. That's famous, but it doesn't mean that even this is the majority. ليس هذا حتى قول الأكثر من العلماء المتقدمين. فإن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم Never been proven that he was born in the 12th of Rabi' al-Awwal. Never been proven that. Uh, there is no any correct evidence to show us that the Nabi Sallallahu was born in the 12th of Rabi' al-Awwal. As a matter of fact, أكثر علماء الحديث يقولون أنه ولد في العاشر من Rabi' al-Awwal. Many of the scholars of hadith, they say, he was born in the 10th of Rabi' al-Awwal. And also, many said that he was born in the second of Rabi' al-Awwal, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And there is a good number of people as well said he was born in the 12th. But there is nothing to support any one of these ideas when he was exactly born, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Min latifi ma qama bihi. One thing before I move to the next. We know that he was born on Monday. Because the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, هذا يوم ولدت فيه في صحيح مسلم. Monday is a day that I was born in. If actually, which is possible today, 
if you go back in calendar and you go to 12 Rabi' al-Awwal, okay, in that year, uh, and you calculate it, it would not come Monday, the year which is 570. It, it wasn't Monday. 12 Rabi' al-Awwal wouldn't be Monday. Monday was the 9th of Rabi' al-Awwal. So the 9th of Rabi' al-Awwal was Monday. So that's interesting. And if you, if you calc some of the uh, modern scholars, they start calculating uh, the date and they track it back and they found that actually Monday at that basically timeline will be the 9th of, not the 10th, not the 12th, the 9th of Rabi' al-Awwal. Why these different opinions? لماذا هذا الخلاف؟ لأن العرب والناس عموما Arab especially and generally speaking do not care to document the dead of birth uh, unless there is something very significant about that person he's the son of a king or maybe a son of the emperor something very special like that but in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi born from parents regular parents, regular individual in Mecca noble there's many noble uh, family members as well so there is no need for yeah, I need to document that particular date that's why Nabi Sallallahu birthday is really not very known it's not well known to uh, that we don't have any well established evidence to tell us that he was born in the 12th Rabi' al-Awwal الثاني عشر من ربيع الأول وهذه من أكبر المشاكل التي تواجه الذين يحتفلون بالمولد النبوي This problem is a big problem for those who celebrate the birthday of the Prophet ﷺ every year that one of the biggest problems that they ch- a challenge that they have that they cannot prove that he was born in this particular day as a matter of fact يعني Again, I don't want to use consensus because there is no consensus even in the following point. But the vast, vast majority of the Muslim scholars said that he died in the 12th of Rabi' al-Awwal. It's not his date of birth. Yani if you want the, the largest number of scholars, they will agree that 12 Rabi' al-Awwal is his date of birth. Not date of birth, date of his death, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Not his date of birth. And, and that became a problem for those who celebrate the 12 Rabi' al-Awwal and taking it for granted. And unfortunately, making the Muslims all over the world think that this is a fact. Well established. وهذه حقيقة مسلمة والصحيح أن ليست كذلك أيضا I, I would like to say something else about النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم's birthday since we are in this topic uh, some people uh, start celebrating the birthday of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and tomorrow you will see all over the world some official holidays in Muslim country presidents, uh, kings, مدري إيش uh, 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 basically they celebrate that day and they make it an official celebration um, when did this start it? when this started it? the one who really uh, established this uh, were, were the Fatimis the Dawla al-Ubaidiyah al-Qaramita they are Ismailis they're not even Sunni Muslims they were Ismailis who uh, very, 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 very extreme Shia sect who came from North Africa and they sent one of their slaves, Jawhar. He led uh, a very famous battle, conquered uh, Egypt. Then he basically called them to come to Egypt. And Egypt and the Muslim in general they love the Nabi Sallallahu Every Muslim does. They love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi family. So they changed their name to Fatimis. They call themselves Yantasibun uh, ila Fatima bintu Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi or ila Ali Bayt Nabi Sallallahu They said from the Prophet Sallallahu family 
and they have nothing to do with the process on a family lived hundreds of years before that in North Africa and Tunisia were no lineage to the Prophet Sallallahu They just did that when they came to Egypt just to basically to justify the ruling over the Egyptian. Then al maqrizi the famous Mu'arikh, the famous historian, fi kitabih about the history of Egypt, uh, he wrote about how they started it celebrating you know, it's, it's a very different scene. For the first time, the Sunni area, all of a sudden, ruled by extreme Shia group taking over. And it was a brutal uh, uh, dictator rulers at that time. Uh, how can you basically make people distracted? By starting all these, you know, holidays and all these events, so almost after every other week, there will be a celebration. So Al-Maqrizi, rahimahullah, said, they used to officially celebrate, they start celebrating Mawlid al Hussein, Mawlid Fatima, Mawlid al Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Mawlid Jesus, Isa Alayhi Salam, the, the Mawlid, the, basically the Christmas, uh, uh, as, or I don't know if it was in you know, December or not, but it's official, the, 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 the birthday of Jesus. Then you have uh, 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 other prophets. Then you have, uh, he mentioned about in Nairuz, they start celebrating the in Nairuz, which is in uh, Masr uh, known as Shem al Nisim today. They are the first people who started that. Shem al Nisim originally or in Nairuz come from the Persian Empire, you know, the Persian who used to celebrate. So they brought, even Egyptian has not to do with the Persian culture, but they brought this into the country. The point was to keep people, what, busy with all these things. This is psychologically distract people. Uh, if you notice, this is how also Shia uh, state run usually their affair with their people. Yani, I was looking uh, yesterday at the official religious holidays in Iraq. Since the Shias now ruled Iraq after the Gulf War and they after the American occupation, uh, I was looking at the official holiday, religious holiday. Guess what? From the beginning to the end, almost all of them, Ma'atim. Ma'atim is what? Ma'atim is basically uh, not celebration. Uh, the, it's an event where you cry or you uh, huh? mourning the death of someone. So it goes like this. Uh, exactly in every single month, in 12 months in the year, in every single month, you will have two major ones. Sometimes three. Ma'atam al Hassan al Hussein, Ma'atam al Ali ibn Abi Talib, Fatima, Madri, and all Kadim, and all the way to some of the Al Hakim al modern day. So, can you imagine you, you basically you're mourning every month someone and you're crying? What kind of psychological depression is this? You know, what kind of de depressed community this will be? It's all about death and like mourning the death of somebody. So you won't distract people, put as many holidays. So in Egypt, they did that. And you can tell that they started this. طيب, when these guys came to Egypt, the in the end of the third century Hijri. So the in the fourth century, by the beginning of the fifth. Some ulama said, no, this is not fair, you Sunni, you guys saying that. The first one who celebrated the, the birthday of the Prophet ﷺ was not the Ismaili extreme Shia. It was the Sunni scholars in Erbil, uh, 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 Al Malik Al Mudaffar, uh, I think his name is Al Kobuk, her name is hard. Um, he's Kurdish. He's one of the generals of Salah al-Din, and if I'm not mistaken, he was also his son-in-law or something like that. Uh, he joined Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi, 
and he was well known al kubkuri or something like that it's been a long time so uh, this uh, king al uh, mudaffar when you read his biography ibn kathir rahimahullah said uh, about him that he was very generous man he used to donate a lot of food a lot of money a lot of he helped a lot of people uh, and he was a righteous person uh, and this was 570 something hijri any 500 years after the prophet sallallahu death all what they have a statement by abu shama said wa awwalu man ihtafala bihi fi al abu al-mudaffar hada abu al-mudaffar al-malik Abu Shama, who's a great Shafi'i scholar, said that uh, in Al Musul, the first one who celebrated it was this king. But if you examine the statement of Abu Shama, he didn't say he's the first one ever celebrate. He said the first one in Al Musul. Yani this bid'ah did not transfer from Egypt to, to Sham in, uh, uh, in Syria or in Iraq in the hand of the Shia, but at the end of that, basically a Muslim Sunni scholar who started at that. But again, it is like 500 years after the Prophet So you're talking the gap between the first time the Mawlid concept came as an idea, uh, more than 400 years or four generations of Muslims. طيب. Later on, about seven, eight hundred years, Celebrating the Mawlid became very common practice. After the fall of the Ubaidi state, they kept some of these celebrations, and definitely one of them, the Prophet Sallallahu birthday. And it became common. That's why there is a lot of scholars uh, talked about the permissibility of celebrating the birthday of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Among them, Al-Hafidh ibn Hajar, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, and Al-Sakhawi, and uh, uh, Ibn Duhya, uh, uh, and uh, uh, Abu Shama uh, uh, and uh, someone like Jalal al-Din al-Suyuti rahimahullah so you will have a good number of, of ulama and scholars who said that celebrating the birthday of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa as long as it is free as long as it is free from evil doer doing like what? mixing between men and women like drinking alcohol, drinking eat bad things, smoking marijuana and smoking hashish, which it shows you that this kind of practice was associated because it's like, it's, for me, it's exactly like Christmas. You know, Christmas became associated with what? With party and drinking and, you know, it, it basically associated with the people's culture. And, and that's what, so that's a lot of scholars said, don't do that. Also, they talked about some stuff that uh, it happened in some of these gatherings for celebrating Mawlid, such as saying that the Prophet comes to attend the Mawlid. And I've seen some of these uh, on video on YouTube, even in, in countries like Muslim countries, Arab countries like Kuwait and, and other countries as well. I've seen some of them when they celebrate the birthday of the Prophet and they said, Hadar, 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 he, at, he arrived, he arrived. Yani the Prophet Then one of them will like say, ooh, and he fall on the floor, you know, shaking. And, and I, I, when I saw that, I asked myself, yani I thought when the Nabi Sallallahu is rahmah, mercy, why this guy start like collapsing and like a seizure? You know, it, it just when he comes, supposed to be, yeah, that's not rahmah. Yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, rahmah lil So, a lot of scholars who I mentioned their names, who allowed to celebrate birthday, they said, we, you cannot do this stuff. This stuff which is claiming that you attend, not, we don't agree with it. We still celebrate the mawlid, but we don't agree with stuff like that. But most of those people, especially we have a, 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 people in America also say something like that, they said it should be only limited to what? Limited to reading the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ, remembering the Prophet ﷺ, uh, uh, making food and distributing food uh, to people during that day. Um, many of them, even though they, they, they appear to be moderate uh, in their approach, but 
they will recite al burda uh, which is written or initiated by al busiri and no doubt this qasida al burda as a poetry it's very beautiful but as a aqida it is very problematic it's very because in it a lot of lines that is nothing but al istighatha bin nabi sallam calling upon the prophet seeking his help seeking his aid seeking his you know uh, 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 basically um ghawth sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam and no doubt this is shirk billah this is shirk billah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said la tad'u ma'a allahi ahada don't call upon any other than allah wa anna al masajid lillah fa la tad'u ma'a allahi ahada takhadhu min duni allahi andada they have taken andad deities that they worship and worshiping is al dua al dua huwa al ibadah yaqul an nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam al dua is the form of act of worship and no doubt uh, uh, giving any form of act of worship to other than allah azzawajal is considered a form of shirk exactly like giving any one of al rububiyyah allah one of the quality of allah's rububiyyah to other than Allah, if you can believe that someone knows the unseen, control the unseen, you know there is someone uh, 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 created the world, controlled the life of death, controlled the rizq, no doubt that anyone believe that, that's also a form of shirk, other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. طيب. So here, uh, some might say, we don't even recite al burdash Can we celebrate the birthday of the Prophet it's going to be just simple as this. We celebrate the birthday of the Prophet وسلم, by reading his seerah, by making dua, giving food. How is that? So, the answer for this, the answer for this, uh, we say, first of all, why would we do this in that day? They said because the day of the Prophet Sallallahu birth is a very special day. Because the Nabi Sallallahu said, I like to fast on Monday. I like to fast on Monday because this is a day I was born in. And in my opinion, with all due respect to those who use this hadith, هَذَا نُسَمِّهِ فِي الْعِلْمِ تَضْلِيلِ We call this misleading. وَنُسَمِّهِ إِسْتِغْفَالِ لِلنَّاسِ وَعُقُولَهَا This is basically playing with people's, يعني, يعني insulting people's intelligence. And I get insulted when I hear someone telling me that, I, mean, I, I, I have a better way of, يعني, a better intelligence than to buy this. Because the person who's saying that, he's not celebrating every Monday in the week. If it is about Monday, you, if it's, he said, the Prophet Sallam, he said, Monday a day I was born, that's why I'm fasting. So if you want to say, oh, we remember the day of his birth, which is Monday, so every Monday you should think, oh, Monday, that's the day where the Prophet ﷺ was born. I should give food. I should give, make read the seerah. If that's what you're talking. But you don't. You do 12 Rabi'il Awwal. If it's Thursday, Friday, Sunday, it doesn't matter. It has nothing to do anymore with Monday. You see what I'm saying? So this is like, Playing with people's mind, that's not, that's not correct. That makes no sense. That's number one. Number two, they said, uh, in Sayyid al-Bukhari, Abu Lahab, Abu Lahab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reduced, give him a little bit of break in hellfire, okay, that he will be able to have a little bit of drop of water coming in between his finger that he will suck it on it, okay, in hellfire. 
just because what? When the Prophet ﷺ was born, the day he was born, and an, uh, a slave woman who became she to him and she said, I have his slave girl, and she said, Abdullah, the Prophet's father, got a son, and his basically he got a son. Then he said, Good news. I need, like he was so happy with this good news, and said, You're free for the sake of Allah. Just as basically what? Because she gave him the glad tiding of the birth of Muhammad. So they said, that means that the date of the birth of the Prophet is so special that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give a break to someone who is so kafir like this in hellfire just because she gave him the glad tiding of the Prophet is born. So if, the, if, if a kafir like Abu Jahl recognize that it is a very special occasion, that's why he freed that woman, okay? Abu Lahab, sorry. So we should also recognize the value of this day, day. And since we don't free slaves, but we should what? Celebrating by making dua and dhikr and giving food to people and so forth. The answer for this, first of all, this story, it's in Sahih al-Bukhari, but that's misleading to say it's in Sahih al-Bukhari. You know, I accept it from an average Muslim, but I don't accept it from someone like Darul Ifta in Egypt, the fatwa, uh, uh, basically, center in Egypt. I don't accept it from a scholar, a student of knowledge. I wouldn't accept that. I call this tadlis. This is misleading. Because when we say Sayyid al-Bukhari, as a student of knowledge, Sayyid al-Bukhari, that al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, made the conditions that it will be authentic, only al-ahadith al-marfu'ah ila al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam wal-musnadah. Two conditions. That this is a statement by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa or, and, sorry, and, that this chain of, narrator is, chain of narration is complete. But, and it has to be in the text. It cannot be, for example, in the title or a comment. If we say, Sayyid al-Bukhari, we're referring to the ahadith that have a full chain of narration, and it's a statement from the Prophet sallallahu Anything else, al-Bukhari is not saying that I have to follow the same condition and the same rules, like the other, the one I want to make sure that it's 100% correct, what the Prophet ﷺ said or did. When I said the story, what most of you understood, Sami, when I said the story, you, when I tell you from Sahih Bukhari, you thought that this is something the Prophet told us, صح? and that's obviously everybody. But the reality, this is not true. طيب, what's the truth? The truth is that this is a dream. Al-Abbas saw. And Al-Abbas saw that dream when he was not Muslim yet. When he was kafir. And in Nabi Sallallahu never approved that dream. Nor that dream was represented to the Prophet Sallallahu Nothing like that. It's just Al-Abbas telling, I saw a dream after basically... Uh, uh, about my brother, this and this happened. Since when the dreams of a non-Muslim will be a source of legislation or a source of deen that we take? Since when a dream is basically where we take or we base our evidence or we base our statement from? That's number one. Number two, Yarit. You might argue, maybe he saw he showed to the Prophet. Ya Habibi, even this is not is not complete to Al Abbas. This is not is Mursal in Marasil Urwa. Wa in kanat min Asahil Marasil. 
لكنه ليس على شرط البخاري عروة did not meet العباس there is some gap between them so here we say an Urwa his irsal عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم is authentic but not about basically a story that from one of the companions so we say that this evident from looking at it from this hadith perspective is not correct number two what this has to do with celebrating the birthday of the Prophet ﷺ. The man, he basically free a slave because of a good news. Let's assume this whole thing is correct. Let's assume it's whole thing correct. He free that slave because the good news of his nephew. Happy to get a nephew. Happy for his brother that he got a, a son. From where you would you say that this required that we have to celebrate the birthday of the Prophet ﷺ or to do? So Abu Lahab became now our role model to follow. Also they said, وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ الله. Remind them of Allah's days. And no doubt one of the most important days in the history of Muslims is the day the Prophet ﷺ was born. So we should remind each other of these days where it's so important in our history. And we say, I'm, ha- I'm fine with that. I'm fine. I'll tell you, by the way, today was the Prophet ﷺ born. This is the day. Let's assume it's 12 Rabi'l Awwal or the 9th or whatever day. Okay, or it's Monday. I'll remind you about him. That's fine. Just as, as a reminder, and I don't have a problem with that. By the way, today, like what we do, today Uhud took place. We don't have a celebration of Uhud, and we start crying over the death of Hamza, and over the death of Musa ibn Umair. You know, we don't embedder. We remember that day. It's min ayyamillah. We don't have a celebration of Badr, uh, 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 for example, and we distribute halwa, and we put Allahu Akbar, it's a great victory. We don't يعني, have a party over it. We remind each other of Iyamillah. No doubt, remembering that this is the day the Prophet was born, if we could agree on one a day. But that's about it. That's the reminder. But you have attached to it rituals. You have surrounded this with a certain ritual, ibadah, and, and, and formulate a structure around it. And even if someone goes against that structure, will feel like wrong. I'm going against the, the norm. Plus that thing that you build have opened the door for so many things that even those moderate voices who celebrate the birthday, they themselves recognize it's dangerous. What's the benefit? They said the benefit is to remind people of Muhammad Sallallahu But why don't you do that all year long or every month in the year? What's يعني, the point? Oh, to show our love. To we show our love, we should show our love consistently. And the thing here will be that we say it is so wrong to see the issue this way. Those who are celebrating the Mawlid, it's they love the prophets, blah, blah, blah. So automatically you think if you don't celebrate the Mawlid, you don't love the prophet. That's not true. We don't celebrate the Mawlid Rasulullah and we love the Prophet more than anyone else. Balash, not me and you. Umar radiallahu an, the one who said, I love you Rasulullah more than myself. Abu Bakr, the one who loved Muhammad more than himself. Did he ever celebrate the birthday of the Prophet No. Somebody said, yeah, because he was busy with the, the wars and you know, type. Umar, 10 years, was busy, busy with the wars. What kind of logic is that? Busy with the wars. If this is something important, what can be more important than showing the love for Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Tab Uthman, Ali, Muawiyah, the Umayyads, the whole entire Umayyads time. Tab Abu Hanifa, Malik, 
الشافعي أحمد any one of their students nothing ولا nothing talk about celebrating birthday of the Prophet all these years and Alisa Ajib isn't that strange that all of a sudden kid that pops up here what I want you to be very careful what that many people today said yes but Sheikh you cannot deny the fact yes maybe it started this way but later on a lot of ulama adopted it many ulama adopted many ulama adopted and many ulama opposed it التعارض بين أقوال العلماء ليس حجة. And I want to make this crystal clear. When you have two opinions between the scholars, the differences of opinion between the scholars is not a justification for the khilaf itself. The justification of the khilaf only comes إذا تعارضت الأدلة وليس إذا تعارض الرجال. The justification when the evidence are Basically, con- basically contradict uh, uh, the evidence come against each other's. This has an evidence, and this has an evidence. You know, an evidence, and this have an evidence. Evidence. So when you have this come against each other, yes, here we say that. But if just because an opinion against another opinion, that doesn't make the issue khalas. Wallahi, it's okay. That's 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 not that's not right. Those who justified the thing that I told you are mainly the issues that they used to justify such celebration. But for us, we say that this is something never been practiced for hundreds of years and those people who love the process on the most. And for me, more important than the issue itself is the concept that حب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم should not be understood in the form of innovations. And practicing things not from his sunnah. You love the Prophet Sallam truly, follow his sunnah. Somebody said, Ya Shaykh, Ush fiha yani, nwazza akil. Nobody told, Wazza akil kill yom, ya habibi. We would love you to, 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 to pass food every day to people. You the one who making an issue, not me. You the one who making an issue that that particular day I want to distribute food. You the one who making an issue. You know, if you want to give food every single day or every week, whatever, Allah may Allah help you. I'm fine with that. Be we all in meals, <laughs> you know, that's fine. Uh, I mean, meals and wheels, that's fine. Every day. But you, the one who said, no, this particular, I have to do this. You basically initiate Al Nabi Sallam. His deen is completed. I'm They have partners that they legislate for them from the religion, from what Allah did not give permission of. No, we don't. We don't have anyone to legislate for us. That's why we sang. That celebrating the birthday of the Prophet as a ritual, as a associated with active worship, in, 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 in my opinion, is something unacceptable. And it is a bid'ah. Does everyone celebrate the Mawlid as an innovator? No. Because some people, as I said, al bid'ah, many times you heard me say, is levels. And I think that's a very minor issue, in, in my opinion, as long as it's free from shirk, as long as it's free from calling other than Allah, as long as it is not something to establish a fundamental issue in Islam, which is basically the permissibility to initiate act of worship in Islam, which is not part of it. Um, النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ابن القيم said كان مولده في جوف الكعبة he was born inside الكعبة but many sources as well أنا العجيب يعني ابن القيم يعني يقول لا خلاف there is no different opinion about that and this is a little bit عجيب يعني that he said that because there is many of the 
writer of the seerah mentioned that he was not born inside Kaaba. He was born inside uh, his house, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his family's house. Uh, it wasn't inside Kaaba, and I, I, I don't think that this narration is authentic at all. That he was born inside Kaaba, I just, I can't imagine that. It's just weird. The Arab used to honor Mecca so much. The Arab used to honor Al Kaaba so much. Can you imagine they lit a woman just with her blood and go and like deliver her baby with all the blood inside Kaaba? And they know that this najasa, the blood is najis. And no, no one will agree on to that. Unless there is something we don't know, an incident, she's hiding. I don't, but there is nothing like to, to give that kind of indicator. But what we know from Al Arab, how they honor the Kaaba and how they respect it, very hard for me to imagine that this error happened. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there is no need for uh, it, no need for going over that. But the Ajib, yani, Kalimat ibn al-Qayyim, قال لا خلافة أنه ورد في جوف الكعبة. There is no difference of opinion. But there is, yani, I found many of the ulama mentioned that he was not born inside the Kaaba. Yeah. His parents were not like muhideen, so, yeah. His father died, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, while he was in his mother's womb. And his mother died seven months after he was born, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She died between Mecca and al Medina in a place called Al-Abwa. Um, she was visiting her uh, brothers. And the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sorry, his mother died seven years. What's a, yeah, seven years after the Prophet. Sallam. Sorry, um, his father. It said it was said that he died while the Prophet Sallam inside his womb, or seven months after the birth of the Prophet Sallam. Seven أشهر بعد مولد صلى الله عليه وسلم. His uncle, his jed uh, grandfather Abdul Muttalib, took care of him until he died, when the Prophet Sallam was about eight years. Some said set six, some said ten. Then Abu Talib took care of him until he was, uh, he was like at that time about 12 years old or nine years old. And he went with his uncle all the way to Asham when he was about nine years old, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when he became 25 years old, he went to again on another trip, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in a business to Asham uh, for Khadija. Uh, later on, he married her. And it's been said he was 30 years old when he married Khadija radiallahu anha wa arda. When he became 40 years old, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam uh, uh, became a prophet and messenger. And here another point. When the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which date is more important you think in the history of Islam? The day of him Birth or the day when he became a prophet? Prophet, صحيح, the Hidayah comes on the day when he became a prophet and messenger. If there is any day we should celebrate, really, it will be the day that Ashraqat fihi nur al that the Nubuwa came. صح? When the Sahaba radiallahu anhum want to start the Hijri calendar. If date of birth means anything to them, don't you think would have been an option at least? But it wasn't even an option. And when they start debating, when should we start? The debate, not part of it, was the date of birth or the year of the Prophet's birth. It has nothing to do with that. Because nobody ever wants this to be part. It, nobody knows that. This is typically a Christian culture came to Islam. If you want the truth, celebrating a birthday of the Prophet, like Jesus, but it's not something that ever known to be something of an important issue to the Salaf or to the companions, radiyallahu anhum. That's why it was not even suggested to be part of the, uh, wasn't part of the discussion. Anyway, then in Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sent as a prophet, a messenger according to Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah and others, in the 8th of Rabi' al-Awwal, in 41, uh, uh, when, uh, basically, 
uh, from the year of the elephant and said no it was not Rabi' al-Awwal it was Ramadan when he was Uqtiya when the first revelation he received sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam um, I will stop here <laughs> I thought I would go much more than that but yani, since it is the Prophet sallallahu birthday uh, I, I thought about just making these uh, comments uh, the, the, the mawlid and the issue related to it um, I want to mention something about this uh, mawlid as well some people quote what Shaykh al-Islam rahimahullah said that al-mawlid uh, that he said those who are celebrating the mawlid uh, they will be rewarded for their intention uh, something in that line in kitab al-qida al-salat al-mustaqim and Ibn, Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah is a very just and fair man he was talking about those who will celebrate the mawlid with good intention, okay? But they will not associate in the mawlid anything which is from these evil practices, like making dua to other than Allah or making these sins, okay? So Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah said, I hope that they will be rewarded for what? For their love for the Prophet He didn't say they will be rewarded for the celebration. Because the celebration he mentioned clearly it is bid'ah and he wrote many things about that. And that's very delicate matter that you might inshallah reward for your intention, for your good intention, but your deeds, no reward for it because Nabi Sallallahu said فهورد, it's rejected. So what is the thing that invented is the celebration. But the love for Muhammad Sallallahu is not invented matter. It is something in the heart and inshallah Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala reward them for it and i know some people that i know they might celebrate the birthday of the prophet tomorrow out of their absolute love to rasulullah sallallahu and inshallah they don't associate anything with with that with shirk and kufr i would not say they are innovator or mubtadi'a even though i always said this action is wrong and, and it's bid'a in itself but may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive them and we know in nabi sallallahu said one person try his best and make a mistake, and get one ajr. But listen, in Nabi Sallallahu said, Akhta. <laughs> in Nabi Sallallahu said, when someone makes ishtihad and he's wrong, he get one ajr. But in Nabi call it what? Wrong. You cannot say it's okay. Yani we have these days, some people say, oh, man, oh it's okay. It's, it's, it's akhta, in Nabi Sallallahu said. So that's a wrong, but you know what? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him for it. What I'm trying to establish is that this notion that not because every ikhtilaf, it means every different opinions, it means it's okay and you can do it. No. We follow the evidence. We follow the thing that it is, has the correct evidence. And if someone try his best and do his best, and that's what he arrived to, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us and uh, of this been said it is important for us not to be so dry when it comes to the issue of Rasulullah it's not enough to say it's bid'ah but also we have nothing in our heart towards yani nothing move our heart yani that in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lahu fadl alayna sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he made the sacrifice and I spoke last week a lot about this issue you know, we make sure that our love to Muhammad وسلم, became stronger than the love of the Mubtadi'ah to Rasulullah وسلم, or to the Bid'ah. You know, that's something important to be in the heart of the believer of, of, of the Sunni uh, Muslims. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us with Nabiyyina sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Jannat al naim And uh, tomorrow, next week, inshallah, I would like to speak about the Prophet وسلم, physical description. But that will be very fast. العجيب يعني بعض الفقهاء ذكروا أن هناك خمسين فائدة لمعرفة وصف جسد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. Some of the علماء said there is fifty lessons you can learn from knowing the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم physical description. Fifty lessons. That's why العلماء cared for that and wrote books about that. So we will explore not fifty I promise you. Maybe one or two or three or four or five maximum. Uh, but inshallah next week. Inshallah. Yes.